welcome to the Frog Pod, your weekly video podcast series by Costa Rican Vacations. I'm your host, Adam Baker, and I'm discussing everything Costa Rica related uh, with leading experts, industry professionals, as well as my friends and colleagues here at Costa Rican Vacations. Today, I'm joined by Mark Fitzpatrick. Mark, it's good to see you. Hi, Adam. And Molly, again, back with the Frog Pod. Thanks yes. for coming back in. Um, Mark, for those of uh, for those of the listeners uh, who don't know you, tell me a little bit about yourself. So I am from Scotland, Glasgow, and I have been in Costa Rica for almost seven years now. Um, I moved here because I'm married to uh, a Tika, Costa Rican, and uh, my little boy is not so little anymore. Joshua came at seven, and he's now a moody teenager at fourteen. Nice. And what brought you to Costa Rica originally? Well, it really, we didn't meet in Costa Rica. We met in Europe. And so my wife came and lived in England for the best part of 12 years. Mm. And then um, after a period of time, she got homesick, wanted to come back. And so we moved to Costa Rica. Slightly better weather here than the UK. Yeah. Just a tad. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Scotland. Just exactly. a tad. I guess it was a pretty easy decision for you to come back. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a great job and, and a really nice lifestyle. But I thought the weather was... Um, yeah, it was a pusher for me, so yeah. the, the climate was a big deal for me. Nice, nice. And Molly, uh, being a new parent, as we were discussing before, how's that going in Very Costa Rica? Yeah. She, yeah she... Getting lots of sleep? Uh, more or less. More or less. <laughs> I don't remember asking you what actually um, brought you to Costa Rica the first time. Yeah. I was actually supposed to do an internship in Mexico, and Mexico got put on the travel warning list, speaking of safety. Um, yes. my, <laughs> very my, good lead. Huh? Yeah, in my university shut down uh, my internship. They told me I couldn't go just because of safety and like uh-huh. they're still liable because the internship was through the school. Okay. Um and so I ended up last minute it was like a month and a half before I was supposed to leave. I had to change everything and the, like the only places they could get me into were um Costa Rica or Chile and I decided on Costa Rica and that was 7 years ago and isn't that crazy yeah. that, that that one suggestion, just in terms of safety, yeah. changed the course of, of your life? life? Entirely. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. I think back to the same thing when I came over after university. One decision, somebody said, oh, you guys should go you know, to Costa Rica, me and my sister at the time. And I always think back to that one thing yeah. when you can notice the rest, of the, yeah. the rest of the path. Well, Molly, as you said, that's a very nice segue into our, into our topic. So today we're going to be discussing safety in Costa Rica. I know it's a question we get asked a lot. How safe is Costa Rica in general? Super safe. Super safe. <laughs> exactly. I, I totally agree. We're all expats, right? Yeah. And we've been here for, goodness knows, nearly 25 years between us. Yes, yeah. Um, but, Mark, uh, I know you, you now work in our travel experience team. Uh-huh. So you deal with a lot of our guests and clients in country. And before you were planning vacations as well. When somebody asks you, oh, Mark, is it, is it safe? What's your general go-to response? I always think of it as how did I feel before I came to Costa Rica? Mm-hmm. And when I was bringing my kid over who was seven years old, I had the same concerns. I wondered how safe is it to to raise a kid here? And so I think Costa Rica is like most other cities of the world. Yeah. There's places that are, are safe and there's other places that are less safe. Yeah. But on the buy and on the whole, I think it's super safe. Um, I mean, I had been coming on vacation here for probably 10 years before I moved here. And so I had a good feel for it. I really got to know the, the, the city and also the surrounding um, places that most of our clients would go on vacation when they come over here. So yeah. um, it, is it safe? Yes, it is safe. I mean, there's probably places in San Jose you might yeah. not want to go. But, you but that would be no this... reason to go there. Absolutely. <laughs> right. You'd have no reason to go there. And, yeah. and it's a little bit like living in Glasgow. There's places in Glasgow I wouldn't probably want to yeah, go yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, when you're walking around the city centre yeah. or um, when you're in your neighbourhood, completely safe. No, no, for sure. Uh, and Molly, when people are asking, is it safe? What do they generally mean? What are they looking for? I think a lot of people compare it to other Caribbean, de- Caribbean destinations uh-huh. like Mexico, Dominican Republic, where, you know, like a lot of those... Obviously, it depends where in the country you are in those countries, but a lot of it, sometimes it's like you go to the resort, you stay in the resort, you don't leave the resort. Yeah, right. Because if you that. leave the resort, it's not it's not safe. So that's a big thing that I try to tell people. Like, Costa Rica is super safe. When people ask me, I, that's literally what I say first. I say you can travel around freely on your own and not have a problem. 
Like, you can go into town on your own. It's not as if you have to go with a guide and, like, yeah. have the guide guide you through the right places to go. Like, you can go into a local town. You can go to a restaurant. You can go to the shops and not feel like you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. Isn't that... That's the whole experience of actually traveling and seeing a new culture. Yeah. Like, I... For me, I wouldn't want to travel somewhere and then be trapped in the walls of a resort and actually not see the culture or the people. Mm -hmm. And Costa Rica thrives on this this warmth that the people bring to it that I think as soon as you get out the resort and the hotel, like you say, yeah. you start seeing the real country. Mm -hmm. um, so really, and when they say safe, I guess, yeah, it's just like the ambience, the feeling. Yeah. Um, like you were saying, Mark, San Jose, like any major city or capital, you know, it's generally quite safe, but of course there's areas, you you know, pickpocketing, the basic stuff. Yeah, uh, it's never anything extreme. Yeah, but I think when you walk around the city centre, and you, you're, you're, you're fine walking up and down really? in, in the town. And it's like Molly said, when you're in a town, for example, like Manuel Antonio or Tamarindo or Arenal, mm -hmm. you, you can go down in local restaurants yeah. and walk about. And if you've got teenage kids, you know that they're, they're going to be completely safe. Yeah. So I think that's reassuring. If you're a parent uh -huh. and you want to come to Costa Rica and you've got some concerns, you're not going to be like a lot of Caribbean places where maybe you're in a resort and you yeah. never really get to see that country. Yeah. For sure. When you come to Costa Rica, you're going to really experience Everything. Costa Rica. Meet the local people who are notoriously well known for being super, super. friendly. Yeah, exactly. And, and we encourage it. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Right? That's, That's, yeah. Every time a client asks, is there anything else I'm missing? What else should I do? I say, go into town. Yeah. Go into a local town. It's really cool. You get to experience a bit more of Costa Rica. Eat at a local restaurant. It just it just adds to everything. Yeah. It makes it a, a yeah, nice and, cultural and, experience. And, and even for myself, I, I can probably vouch for this better than many of the people here because I, I use public transport on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. walking up and down La Sabana every single day. So I, I get around. I dine in local restaurants myself and yeah. go for a beer with yeah. my mates in, exactly. a, in exactly. a bar. So, no, it's super safe. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been doing that for nearly 13 years myself. And I totally agree. I've never had any issue here in Costa Rica ever. Um, yeah, and, and, and also explain, like, the popularity in the country when it comes to tourism and how important that is to Costa Rica. All the tourist hubs, you mentioned Guanacaste, Arenal, now Juan Antonio, are even safer, right? There's the tourist yeah. police here. Not, not just that, Costa Rica thrives off tourism. They mm -hmm. don't want to hurt tourists. <laughs> they mm -hmm. want them to come. They want them to enjoy the company, country because that's what they thrive off of. Absolutely. You know, it's what everybody's yeah. job depends upon. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I think maybe it's difficult. I know Molly, you're from uh, up, upstate New York, right? Originally, um, why why do you think or why do you think being you know coming down from the states, perhaps you get a lot of clients who are leaving the country for the first time, and you're coming to somewhere like Central America, Costa Rica. Do you think um, that people are slightly paranoid and or they're worried about leaving the states, and but when they get here, yeah, it's actually yeah, surprising, yeah. right? I don't think they're paranoid. I think. Because a lot of Central America and the Caribbean is, you know, they have, Costa Rica is the safest country in Central America. Right. The last statistic yeah. I saw. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's very different than the rest of, you know, the rest of the countries just because it is so much more safe. Um, yeah. It also has, you know, a higher standard of living. So the health care and the education is better. That makes a huge difference mm -hmm. in terms of, you know. Infrastructure. Infrastructure. And just, you know, it's the disparity between rich people and poor people yeah. isn't as great either because sure. the cost you know the cost of living the standard of living is higher in yeah. general so that you know causes less crime mm -hmm. yeah, yeah <laughs> so sure. so i don't think they're paranoid it's just that they you know they hear about mexico and they hear about the dominican republic and and it's just not the same as that yeah so it's a good question to ask yeah no i, I totally agree with you guys and i think you know we probably wouldn't have been here and you guys now raising families as well mm -hmm. You know, that obviously says a lot yeah, to the safety yeah. of living yeah, in this country. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like I say, Molly's circumstances are a little bit different. She's had her, her baby living here. Yeah. I yeah. actually, my kid was raised for seven years mm -hmm. in the UK uh -huh. before we came here. So, yeah, they were big considerations. Is it a safe place to raise a family? And absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, then, so coming down for a vacation yeah. of a week, two absolutely. weeks, yeah, you, you can have yeah. no problem at all. There is one thing that certainly comes up. It's more on the tropical side, which is snakes, spiders, creepy crawlies. Obviously, we've all been around the country. We're in the tropics. Yep. Um, have you got any fun stories about instances? I... It's not that common, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I hike. I do trail running. I love the forest. I'm out and about in a lot. I did not see a snake in Costa Rica for almost four years. <laughs> four years. <laughs> four yeah. years. Okay. So they're not that common. Um, and I can count on... 
one hand how many snakes I've seen in four years. Yeah. And I've been out a lot. It's funny, right? They keep they keep the areas quite safe. Mark's giving me a face that <laughs> maybe he's going to disagree. I, I don't know. Yeah. I've seen a few. Yeah. I've seen a few. Um, what, yeah, what, what kind of circumstance? Where, where I've where done a couple of hikes on my own, but I mean, not on a guided trail. So I, I've gone off trail and mm-hmm. I've saw a couple of snakes in, in my time. Actually, I saw one in my backyard a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah. But it's not normal to see that. Yeah, it's yeah, first yeah. time. And you live up in the mountains. I live up in the mountains. Don't know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's not, an, it's not normal to see a snake. It's, I not, mean, it's not that common. Like, obviously, I got lucky in four years, but you yeah. see them, but it's not as if they're all over. Yeah, no, and I, th- I, I think most of the places, the hotels, the resorts, they're, yeah. they're, in, they're usually kept in impeccable conditions. You know, we've got Pablo here. We, we've been traveling a lot, doing a lot of these Frog TV episodes. We love going to look for the wildlife. Or whenever Absolutely. a hotel has a trail, we'll go and you know film as much as we can at night. We're really lucky. We see a lot of frogs, you know, a lot of birds. Um, obviously, sloths, monkeys. We're excited when we see snakes. Yeah, and that yeah, just gives yeah. you an idea of how rare it is. I know every, that's not going to be for everybody, yeah. but it's not that common. Not, yeah, no, I, I was thrilled a couple of weeks ago to see this. I was like, "Wow, yeah. there's a snake!" Yeah, yeah, sure. It was super exciting for me to see that in my backyard. Um, but it's not normal. I yeah. mean, when you're in a hotel. The chances of seeing that are somewhat oh, remote. Yeah. Pretty Some, remote. Somewhat remote. And what about, obviously, the question where people, you know, they ask, I don't want to see any spiders or any insects in my room, but they're staying in the rainforest. How do you cope with that? Um, I say that it's kind of unavoidable because you're invading their homes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I think that's they, a great they, way to put it. They, yeah. they, like, they live there. You can't help it. Yeah. It's yeah. not as if, you know, they're the hotel's dirty or the hotel's not maintaining anything. It's just, there are bugs in the rainforest. Yeah. That's that's where of they course. live. So it's really hard. And the rooms um, are usually pretty well enclosed oh, yeah. in most times. This is not a common thing. No, no, no. It's but like, but like if you leave the door open, yeah, yeah. Bugs you, you, come you, you in. Risk. Like, yes. you know, like it, you, yeah. can't, you can't stop it. It's not as if the, yeah, the hotels are swarming with bugs. It's yeah. just like, no, if no, you leave a, a door open or you open yeah. the window and you don't have the screen, like, yeah. Bugs. Especially if you're in the rainforest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cloud forest. Yeah. And the thing you always have to remember is they, they kind of don't really want to be around humans either. Yeah, so, yeah. so bugs and snakes, yeah, yeah. They're, they're likely to just move away yeah, and yeah. get out of your vicinity if you're around. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and when you're in a hotel, if you've got an instance like that, someone from a hotel will come and remove it for you. Yeah, so it's yeah, not a problem. Oh, yeah. And, and it's never really that serious. There's no, nothing that's yeah. dangerous, like really dangerous either. No, Costa Rica, no. it's not like Australia never. where you've yeah, got some wildlife yeah. that could be really... Legal. Yeah, it's not yeah. Australia, yeah. is yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, uh, like yeah, if it moves yeah. in Australia, you're in trouble. You're in trouble, yeah. right? <laughs> that, that would be a great, a great uh, discussion on a podcast, yeah. Um, okay, well, that, that pretty much uh, sums up the, the natural side of it. What about the human side when it comes to driving in Costa Rica? This is always a, a fun topic. <laughs> Both of you are smiling. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so it's kind of Costa Rica can be notorious, especially for expats or foreigners living here. They're, let's say they're pretty, what's the word, passionate when they, when they drive. Uh-huh. But tell me two things. First of all, we've got the roads, the quality of the roads. Uh-huh. That's one thing. And then the actual drivers themselves. Uh-huh. Yeah. So Molly, uh, tell me about your... I can argue with that because the passion one is you when I'm driving. You're the yeah. one that... I am. Yeah. This, is, this is true. I'm like a pretty... Uh, my road rage... Even when Pablo's driving, really, it's I just get so frustrated. It okay, but then you know it's yeah. Obviously, in Britain, there's a whole process of learning to drive. It's yeah. not cheap. There's hours and hours, and it's quite. I, I am probably the worst person to ask. I get it on a daily basis, Rodrigo. I really yeah. do. I, I, my wife will often say, "Why, why are you getting upset?" And I'll say, "But because of this guy. Look, well, look at that." And she'll say, "But my what? Why? Why are you getting upset?" And I'm a big look. She's like. But why are you getting upset? And I'm saying he can't drive. And she'll say, exactly. He doesn't know how to drive properly. He's yeah. never been taught how to drive properly. Right. So don't be angry at him. They've yeah. just never. It is an element of truth yeah. in that. They're, they're not, the driving standards are not great, but you do kind of get used to it. You get yeah. used to anticipating and then someone. You start picking up their ass. Yeah, and you pick up the, the back <laughs> okay. of Actually, I. <laughs> I've done that once when I was in the UK living. I came back from a vacation. Yeah. And as you know, in the UK, there's cameras everywhere, and like bus lanes. Yeah, yeah. So I had like my son in the back and my wife, and I was like, "Whoa, Tico driving!" And I moved into a bike lane. A week later, a week later, I got a letter in, 150 pounds fine for going in a. Oh, so God. there you go. Don't can don't you, pick up bike. Can you imagine if they tried to do that? Oh, I wish Rica. they would do that. I think I understand oh. they did, but it didn't work. 
described it. Right. Because They've done so many, it, 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 so many funny little things here with driving and none of them work. Yeah. Like the timers on the stoplight, the, the uh-huh. idea is that if they, this is only... Insane. So you can anticipate? So you, No, the, the idea is like, okay, you only have to wait 45 seconds for this light to change. So don't run the red light. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, 45 seconds is a long time, yeah, apparently. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, and yeah, the, the train, there's lots of train accidents here. Train. People I, think I think it, it's important to point out, like you mentioned, that, that it's in San Jose mainly. Yes, the central, yeah, the yeah, central yeah, region yeah, of the yeah, country yeah, has yeah. a million people, yeah. more or less, of yeah. the five million population. Yeah. As soon as you're driving, you know, yeah. in the rural areas around yeah. the tourist parks, it's a lot more peaceful. Yeah. Um, yeah. People have more time of day. Uh, no, and out. that's and if I always compare it to upstate New York when you're driving uh-huh. through, right? That's, like that's because it's comparison. it's back roads. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Like there's there are very few main highways in Costa Rica. It's not as if driving from San Jose to Arenal, you get on one highway and yeah. that's what it is. Mm-hmm. It's like a back road the entire way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's it's town. perfectly paved. They have the little reflector lights on the sides, so you know not to go off the road. Like it's. You know, it's it's normal. Yeah, we we just live in San Jose. So. Yeah, Molly, Molly, what's the uh, some of the bad traits you've picked up? Oh, so yeah, turning a... <laughs> when you turn in, like you just kind of turn whatever's most convenient rather than on your lane. Okay, like undertaking, I think we uh-huh. would call it, right? Yeah, 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 that's what we would, we call it in the UK. You can't undertake. You're, yeah. you're the slow lanes for slow drivers. The middle, the normal speed, overtaking on the outside lane. And yeah, here in Costa Rica, my dad. No, is no, it. no. But like, if you're turning off, like not on the highway, just on a regular. Oh, okay. Just turning on a street, uh-huh, you like gotcha. turn not in your lane. You yeah, just yeah, kind yeah. of like cut in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. My my dad was here last year, and it was very funny. Again, from the UK, very kind of serious driver, very slow. Again, much like your initial reaction, quite yeah. surprised about getting out of San Jose. Um, but you you do get used to it. it, it but you're right, you do adapt some of the bad habits I, yeah. you know i yeah. i have seen me overtake a bus because it's stationary i would never do that back home you know uh-huh. you would wait till the bus yeah, moves. you yeah. you just get more impatient here yeah. i don't know why i don't know why and the use of horns <gasps> back yeah, home you done that that's, that's, that is a no-no san jose that's yeah. in san jose though because once you get I mean, it's city life versus country life. Yeah, it's a lot that is. more, yeah, it's fair, lot more tranquilo. Like, it's yeah. a lot calmer. Yeah. I guess we're we yeah, yeah, we're just used to what we have because we live here. But I love, my husband is the worst passenger seat driver, so I let him drive everywhere. Mm-hmm. But when we go <laughs> out of San Jose, to, you know, different hotels, Manuel Antonio, Guanacaste, Arnell, I wish I could drive just because I like driving the yeah. back roads because yeah. that's what I'm used to from home. For sure. But he's just worst passenger seat <laughs> driver so it's not worth it but you're right it is two different experiences it's way too we're talking yeah. about living in the city yeah. but then I, I was away at the weekend there and it's a beautiful drive to yeah. uh, Papagayo these yeah. days that, that yeah. road's amazing it's super, yeah, 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 super easy yeah. there's, there's a story that always sticks with me this was maybe five six years ago and I was coming to work you know we're in the nice suburb here in the west side of San Jose mm-hmm. and we were driving down this boulevard and I looked out the window to my left and there's there's these two uh Ticos, two locals on a moped, sharing it. The suspension is definitely being tested. Neither one of them have helmets. And the guy in the back is holding a huge pickaxe. It's about five foot in length. Wow. Huge. And he just, I'm just looking going, oh, wow. this is great. This is, I had to take a picture. It's hilarious. I've like, done that once. So, yeah. So with, a, with a guy with a chainsaw on the back. I yeah, took a yeah. picture right. as well. Classic. It's brilliant. The whole family in one more. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. My favorite is the live animals on the motorcycle. <laughs> uh-huh. Time I saw. A yeah, girl. yeah. When you when the farm animals are being shipped yeah. from one place to the on other. a motorcycle. On a motorcycle. Yeah, there was a goat. Okay. <laughs> Two people and a goat in the middle. You did, yeah, it's testing. <laughs> yeah. it's testing physics sometimes. Uh, yeah. Um, like you guys were saying, how, the other question is the the quality of the roads because sometimes Costa Rica has. You know, potholes again, yeah. mainly because of the rain. Or you know, I, I think it's a little bit. I maybe things have improved, and I've kind of forgotten that they were worse. Yeah, I generally find the roads are pretty good here. I really yeah. do. I, Especially, I mean, Costa Rica again. They they thrive off of tourism. They take care of the roads yeah. that people are going to be driving on. Especially in the main areas. Yeah, yeah. Like you were saying about Papagayo. Yeah, all the way to yeah. Arenal. I think the drive to Arenal is one of the best roads in Costa yeah. Rica. Yeah, yeah. It's super smooth. It's windy, but the road, it's and occasionally, like if you're going to the cloud forest, you know, mountain trails, they it's do exist in different off. places. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, and even in the city, there, there's there's there's, there's some there's potholes, potholes, but yeah, yeah. Um, on the whole, I, I think the roads are absolutely. So, fine. so to summarize, you know, 
taking uh, private transportation or public transportation is fine, but if you wanted to drive, just be prepared for the central region. Yeah. Maybe get a two by four, four by four if you know you're going off the beaten path Absolutely. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stay safe. yeah. I recommend a four by four just to have. Yeah, me too. Extra extra yeah, I always. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. there's some uphills and it's and not that much more expensive. And yeah. it's just and plus your luggage, it's just more comfortable. Yeah, awesome. Um, well, one other question that came up um, that some people ask is, why is it a bad idea to feed the animals from a safety perspective? So obviously we wow. know from like, a, yeah, you know, like from the animal side, you don't want to encourage it too much feeding sloths, yeah. but in terms of safety, yes. don't feed the animals. Monkeys can actually be pretty territorial. Right. Um, we had a coworker who worked at a wildlife ref- yeah. refuge, or her husband, uh-huh. sorry, a coworker's husband worked at a wildlife refuge and a monkey bit his ear. I mean, it's not he was even, quite close to the. Uh, yes, I mean he he's quite, in, he's close, he's he's, in yeah. with these, yeah, like in right. an enclosure with these monkeys. It's not as if he's. It was his first day, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not as if he was like walking through the forest and a monkey no, came down. No, he was in a sanctuary. He's, he's in a wasn't sanctuary, it? and yeah. he, you know, and and it was his first day, and the monkeys got territorial because he was a new person. But it's just you've got to be careful still. I mean, For sure. wildlife monkeys, like they don't come up to you and for the most part, and, like, try to eat things unless they're used to people doing exactly. that. But it's still, and also diseases, I'm yeah. sure there's problems. Yeah. So, again, you know, when people ask that question, is it about a deer? I mean, yes, you shouldn't do it. You don't encourage it too much so they get so used to human interaction. But if you're safe, if you're safety, any yeah. type of animal, yeah. you know. Yeah, you just yeah. don't know. I mean, it's right. Right. monkey teeth. Yeah, yeah, those white-faced capuchin monkeys, yes. uh, you know, when they, you smile at them, they take that as yeah. a sign of aggression. Is that and right? They, yeah, that. so you show that you, you show your teeth and they think you're like know. hissing at them. Yeah, I had so one, then they get more angry. <laughs> I had one come in my uh, balcony at, at the last weekend. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And does uh-huh. and came right on the balcony, right? Came cl- climbing down the building, came on the balcony. And we were like, ooh, what's happening here? I've never seen nice. one come in with that voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He grabbed <laughs> He grabbed a, an empty packet of potato chips, scuttled up. <laughs> Here's the best part. Because it was empty, he came back down and threw it back in. <laughs> he wasn't oh impressed. It was they, empty. See, they know they're expecting they're smart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was they're expecting they're a full pack. Yeah. He yeah. just tossed it back in. Uh, that's another thing, like uh, safety in, in Mount Antonio, the National Park. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people ask, you know, what's it like for animals? Talking of monkeys, it gets pretty rough when it comes to the animals. The raccoons are trying raccoons to nick things naughty. out of your bags. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the monkeys are coming down looking for chips and goodness yeah. knows what else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so bear that in mind. Um, I actually, talking of uh, the National Park, we've got some questions here that were coming in um, on our Facebook page. So guys, please do shoot us a, a message. YouTube, Costa Rican Vacations, uh, or Facebook, Costa Rican Vacations, you can find us there. And we always try and get to the, uh, the questions. Um, somebody wrote in asking about the safest beaches in the country when it comes to swimming specifically. And that kind of ties in with another question that followed on uh, how bad are riptides in some beaches? So where do you guys uh, suggest um, for your guests to go when it, when, they, when they, they come and they want a nice, safe beach, beach experience to go swimming, for example? Mm-hmm. Do you have any go-to places? I mean, the calmer beaches obviously are good for swimming, but some people also want surfing. So you kind of right. have to like... Mix and match. Mix, mix and match, exactly. Manuel Antonio is a, a pretty calm beach, but it has some waves that you could learn how to surf. It's not for people who know already. Um, so it's a, a nice beach to do that. Playa Conchal is a mm-hmm. really calm beach, hardly any waves. So that's super, super safe, super good for children. Um, Tamarindo is good for a little bit next level up surfing, but also for swimming. The mm-hmm. tide kind of changes as it goes down the beach. Um, but those are all you know, really great beaches and also why they're popular because they're all yeah, really the, good swimming beaches. And family-friendly yeah. beaches. Family-friendly, family friendly. yeah. Like, riptides can be sometimes, not common, common is the wrong word, but there's some beaches that there are stronger. Some beaches, sometimes yeah. in Mount yeah. Antonio, the main beach. Yeah. It occurs not yeah. in the park or Concha, like you say. Uh-huh. Like you say, Hermosa next to uh, Hako, uh-huh. very strong for surfing, mm-hmm. so yeah. you have to kind of just be cautious. Absolutely. But it usually, even in Costa Rica, when you get to the beach, there are signs. Exactly, yeah. you do that's know. the thing. And even hotels, if a hotel's on a beach that even you know because riptides doesn't affect the entire beach you know Mm -hmm. they'll tell you hey it's not safe in this area or um at this time we get more riptides you know like they they give you a heads up and but take their advice you know it's not use the pool Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) it's not worth it because if they're advising that it's it's real yeah yeah you know that's 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 great advice oh yeah for for sure Uh, and then finally um jonathan was asking 
what do you do if, if you actually have an issue? So say somebody, you lose your passport or you think it has been stolen or I don't know, you've lost your car keys. Mark, what, especially working in the, our travel experience team, what do you what can guests or clients do if they're on vacation and they have some problem? Not well, we've got a 24-hour concierge team available to our clients. So any issues, just pick up the phone and we'll try and resolve that as best we can to make the rest of your stay um, as pleasurable as possible. Fantastic. And what about for clients who are not traveling with us? So say you're just in Costa Rica, I don't know, you're, you're maybe doing a hostel trip or you're just driving a self-drive vacation. Um, they can call the tourist police, right? The yeah. specific branch. Yeah, of, the uh, tourist cops are, are pretty well known for really helpful. For yeah, um, I didn't for, know there were tourist cops. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. there's many different branches. Yeah, is that new? System. No, it's been no, it's years. been a few years. Oh, yeah. A few years. That's yeah. yeah, but I, I that's since two thousand ten. Two thousand ten. Okay. Okay. okay, so coming up ten to years. Ten, yeah. ten years. Yeah. And I know they're more substantial in in more populated areas. Like yeah, San Antonio, Arenal, Tamarindo. I mean, hopefully. Yeah, but it makes sense, right? Yeah, you don't need, yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, that's I again, I, nothing's happened to me, or even having to use the. the happened to me passport. once. Oh yeah. 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 What happened? <laughs> Had my passport stolen. Oh, there you go. I was using that as a reference. No, it was many, many years ago. It was it was fifteen years ago. Okay. Why, why would somebody yeah. want to steal your passport? But again, I was I wasn't in a a tourist area. I went. Off the and I was on public oh, so transport. This is, this is, great, this is a yeah. great example. But what did you do then? So I, again, it's back in the day. Things um, were a little bit more straightforward yeah. then. Yeah. Um, and so you know, I I I went to the police, reported that they were super helpful, and then they put me in touch with the consulate in San Jose, and I had a new passport within maybe a few days. Yeah, it was really, they're, they're really, really, really nice. straightforward. Yeah. It, it, was really, it was really, back in those days, actually, they made them here, if I remember right. I, I'm rusty uh, on, on the British consulate. Yeah, the British yeah. consulate. Yeah. And, and, and while you're talking about embassies and consulates, the US embassy is the largest one in the country. It's huge. It's huge, and, and it's very accessible, as I yeah. understand it. Not well, I, been, but... I mean, you still have to make an appointment, but yeah. if you call and say you lost your passport, they would yeah. 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 That's that must that's a big deal. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. sad. Yeah. The tourism police was created in two thousand six. Pablo doing the research. Yeah. Nice. Two thousand six. Yeah. Wow. So that's that's when I turned up as well. I don't yeah. know. I, I think I remember them in like the Mount Antonio areas. Yeah. I was yeah, living in Monteverde. Tacoa and all that areas. So wow. They're mm. usually uh, riding bikes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've, I've noticed that. They're not playing uh, flip flops in Hawaii no, shirts now. They're no. yeah. yeah, certainly <laughs> official, and you can see them. Yeah, yeah. No, I, like especially on the topic of safety, I felt in the last ten years and, and oh, longer yeah. that it's got so much safety. Even in San Jose, like you say, walking around, yeah, you yeah. just see more presence. Yeah. When you go downtown, there is police everywhere. You feel yeah. super safe in San Jose. Yeah. yeah, and that's super the capital. Safe. I mean, yeah. generally talking super about safe. my vacation yeah, spots. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, fantastic. Well. Guys, this has been a great discussion. If I had to both ask you your two top tips, two each, when it comes to safety tips for Costa Rica, Molly, what would be your first one? What do you say? Don't do anything you wouldn't do at home. Don't do anything you wouldn't do at home? Ooh, Pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, you wouldn't anyway. walk around at 1 a.m. intoxicated on Absolutely. your own yeah. anywhere in the world. So don't do it. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, don't do anything you want to do at home. That's, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with Molly. I just think know your surroundings. Um, yeah. Just be aware That's of, true. of where you are. And don't don't yeah. do anything you wouldn't do at home. And, yeah. you know, you just, any just other, use like, common sense. Any other essential yeah. tips? Any things that somebody must bring? Or, like, money belts? Are they just use your debit card? No, this is another one. Don't be flashy with stuff. Don't, right. you know, if you have a really expensive engagement ring, wedding ring, maybe leave it at home. You know, yeah. like, yeah, that's a good tip. I mean, traveling in the U.S., that stuff happens too, sure. you know? Sure. So, so just don't, if you have a really nice camera, be sure you're using it when there's, you know, people around yeah. and not, you know, it's not that you have to be paranoid, but just don't, if you have something that's really nice, you know? I, I can vouch for that top tip. You know, we travel a lot with all our camera equipment a lot. And we, it's always safe in all the hotels, but we keep a close eye on it. We never let it, let it out of our sights when we're, when we're shooting on the beaches, yeah. in the parks, yeah. in random spots. Just yeah. general smart travel behavior. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you get opportunist thieves everywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah for sure. Only drive one on the beach exactly. unattended. Like... Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's just asking. Yeah. And even if yeah. it's not a human error, your monkeys will come down and yeah. see if it's, it's oh, like that. It's nice and shiny. Absolutely. <laughs> they may not throw it back in your room. Yeah, it's exactly. 
Guys, well, great tips. Uh, as always, I'm going to finish, I think, Molly, you remember this, with five quick-fire questions okay. just to get you different perspectives on uh, what you love doing here. Mm -hmm. um, I want to hear your first out loud answer. I'm going to give you five different options um, and see if you guys agree or disagree with the different uh, different themes that I have this time. Okay, so the first one is, tell me your answer quickly, hot springs therapy or spa treatment? Mm, spa. Spa. Hot springs. There you go, down the middle. Beach excursion or river tour? Mm, river tour. River tour. Two rivers. Resort or eco lodge? Eco lodge. Oh, Resort. oh I'm going to hey, judge you. Family. Oh, Resort. I'm disappointed. And Molly's on the eco lodge. <laughs> Turtle nesting tour or whale watching? Turtle nesting. Whales. Yeah, whale. Whale. Oh, that's Ooh, mega. Jane, that's a that's a tough one, right? They're both Ooh, good. Oh yeah, no, it's a whale. I tell you, if you've never seen a whale, it's quite it's it's quite something. Um, well, guys, uh, thank you very much uh, for coming in. Last question, Molly. I know I've asked you this before, so Mark. Is there anything you wish you knew before coming to Costa Rica that you didn't? Wish I knew. Um, no, yeah, you know, I was pretty, I was pretty much aware of what Costa Rica yeah. was, where it was located, and you know what the culture was like. So I was quite savvy before oh, I came nice. here. It's not that really... crazy different. No, I don't right? think so. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I was well traveled before I came to Costa Rica. I'd, I spent a long time traveling before I. I went to university, so this is not culturally so yeah. different yeah. from what you're used to. For sure. It's not like being in the Middle East or something where yeah. it's like, wow, this is this is different. Yeah. Costa Rica, there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. So. And Molly, I did want to ask you, what was the major reason, if you could put it down to one, yeah. as to why you stayed? Boy. That's a hard That's question, right? Dun, dun, yeah. um, why I stayed? I always, honestly, it comes, I always wanted to live abroad, and I went abroad a lot when I was in college uh -huh. and out of all the places I went to this felt the most comfortable to me and in for many reasons the distance from home and culture and I mean Spanish is still you know still not quite there yet but get by uh -huh. um so that's that that is a little different um but yeah it just felt the most comfortable fantastic well that says a lot to the safety aspect as yeah, well feeling comfortable true. Guys, Molly, Mark, thank you very much for coming and chatting with us. And uh, both, well, Molly, your link will be below if anybody wants to get in touch regarding a vacation. And Mark will have a great picture of you up somewhere. So people can sleep. <laughs> guys, thank you very much. Until next time. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. There we go, guys. Another great episode. And hopefully you found it informative. Please let us know what you think and any questions you have in the comments box below. And as always, please subscribe to stay in touch with us for your weekly podcast episode. Till next week, hasta la próxima.